What's up, iHeart? It's Marin Morris, and here's an inside look at my brand new album, Humble Quest. Make sure you check it out on iHeartRadio. Circles Around This Town was one of the first songs written for this record before I even knew this record was forming. And writing that song that day with Ryan and Julia Michaels and Jimmy Robbins was kind of the, the first kickoff of what I felt like was the sound of this album. And it was so, it was such a relief. I think we, I breathed a sigh of relief knowing, okay, I can still do this. Like, this is fun. Cause it had just been such a long, like beginning of the pandemic. And I didn't, you know, I was also dealing with like postpartum. And so circles around this town kind of reignited that like pilot light in me knowing that okay I can do this again and I don't suck like I can I can keep going and it's just I felt it in my bones that it was going to be the first single when I got the the mix back it just felt right and it felt like we needed to kick this year off with something fun so that's what we did the furthest thing I wrote with Greg Kirsten my producer and my husband Ryan Ryan and I went to Hawaii because Greg was um, spending most of his like quarantine with his family at their place in Hawaii because LA was pretty much shut down, schools were shut down, so they were just living it up there. So I thought, mm, all right, I'll just come to you and get a free trip to Hawaii out of it. And we, yeah, for like a few weeks, just hunkered down and wrote songs. We would have big group dinners at the end of the day. It was just such a beautiful time, like with my son and my husband and these creative collaborative people in my life. And the furthest thing was a song that was sort of sneaky, like we wrote it and I loved it. And then I discovered it again a few weeks after we got back from Hawaii and Greg sent me the rough mix and I was like, holy shit, like this is really good. I love this, this really is making me emotional. And so, I felt like putting it in the album at the beginning, right after Circles, was just such a left turn after such a bombastic song like Circles to kind of ease the listener back into the story. So I truly do think like the furthest thing is the beginning of the story. I Can't Love You Anymore is a song that we also wrote in Hawaii, uh, Greg, Kirsten, Ryan Hurd and I, and Ryan, um, had that title, I Can't Love You Anymore. And, you know, I just, I've written with him so many times, I can always tell when he's like got a fire in his eyes and he knows he's gonna bowl me over with the idea. And he was right. So he said the hook, I can't love you anymore than I do now. And I was hooked. I loved it. It reminded me of like, the John Prine in spite of ourselves duet. And it was just sort of this like super quirky, realistic, romantic look at two people that are bonkers, but made for each other. So that's one of my favorites. Humble Quest was a weird title that popped into my head when I was driving one day. And it was shortly before I started recording with Greg, but I had the idea, I brought it to my friends and very frequent co-writers, Laura Veltz and Jimmy Robbins. And I <laughs> said the title and they had no idea what I was talking about. They were like, that sounds weird, tell us more. And I just said, I don't know, this is just such a humbling time. I feel like really heavy. I feel like the world feels heavy right now. And I'm just like searching for some sunshine and like, can I do this? Like just a lot of self questioning. And I felt like, especially as a, a woman in country music, feels like that kind of push pull of wanting to remain close to your roots and grounded from where you came from, but also knowing that it is absolutely okay and healthy to be like, you know what, I've got this, I'm good at this. This is what I do. I'm confident in this. It was just a fun exercise to write a whole song about such a bizarre feeling of like, am I humble? I don't know, I guess I'll find out. Background music is a song I wrote the same week that I wrote Humble Quest and I wrote it with the same people, uh, Jimmy and Laura. We were writing a ton that week and 
I brought that title in almost as like an idea to write something sexy, like, oh, everything else is background music when I'm with you and you know, that obviously didn't work out. And I'm glad it didn't because I think that as I had a conversation with Laura and Jimmy, it just grew into something much more mature and evergreen. Background music to me is a love song about the idea that like my husband and I, who are both in music, we joke about like someday we're gonna be old has-beens and you know, playing the the dollar slots at the, the casino and talking about yesteryear and our golden years. And I just feel like it's a weird realism check to be like, yeah, this doesn't go on forever. I mean, unless you're like Mick Jagger. At some point, we're probably gonna like ride into the sunset and just enjoy our retirement. I don't know. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's kind of a song about mortality as well and knowing that someday like I think it would be amazing if people still heard my songs after I was gone and songs that I've written with someone that I loved. Nervous I wrote with my good friend Natalie Hemby and our friend Jimmy Robbins and Natalie she actually brought this idea in to me and Jimmy and Jimmy just had an electric in his hands so we went with that and it felt really roughed up and like we didn't want to keep anything too slick with the production or the vocal and it just felt like okay let's lean into this like really sexual f empowering vibe of being like you make me nervous but like how am i going to describe all the imagery latin ways that you do this and so i just feel like writing with natalie always brings out the most colorful lyrics and we definitely went there on this song and i also feel like vocally I just got in the vocal booth and wailed on it. It was the first time I felt like I took the training wheels off in a long time and just got to like, belt it. So I'm excited to play that one live. Tall Guys, I wrote with Aaron Raytier and Natalie Hemby, and it was my first time writing with Aaron. And he is just like a walking bumper, bumper sticker. Like he always has something hilarious to say. He's such a country guy, but so whip smart and I can't remember if like I brought that title in it, or Natalie did, but it was probably Natalie. It's such a Natalie title, but you know, I'm 5'1", my husband is like 6'3". Everyone is taller than me, literally. So I just wanted to write a song that was like a love song, but also just showing my appreciation for the population that is taller than me, which is everybody. And I like that we kind of end the chorus with like, hey, I love all types, but there's something about tall guys. So it's, it's an ode to my husband for sure. Detour, I wrote with Greg Kirsten, Sarah Ahrens, and Laura Belts. And we actually, the week we wrote it, Cheryl Crow was kind enough to let us use her barn studio here in Nashville because Greg was coming in town. And I was like, I mean, there's some studios we could go check out, but like, you know, I'm just gonna see if Cheryl will let us use it because she like offered one time and I was like, I'm gonna cash in on this favor. So she was kind enough to let us use her studio that week and it's magical because it's like a horse stable slash studio. So you can like open a window and there's a horse head. <laughs> and like, so it's, it's very otherworldly to be there. You feel like you're not in Nashville, but we wrote Detour. Greg was just layering crazy like beautiful guitar sounds and Sarah was in town from LA that day so or that week so we wrote this song and it, it just kind of felt like this old throwback to like those Leanne Womack records I grew up listening to where it's just I think it's probably one of the most country songs on the record just vocally and I love the country instrumentation we do some like steel on there and slide and it's just a really beautiful song Hummingbird was the first song that I wrote for this project, not knowing, but it was back in 2019, and I wrote it with the Love Junkies. And we just, that day, you know, I took a pregnancy test. I had been taking a few, so it wasn't like a complete shock, but I found out I was pregnant the day I was writing with the Love Junkies, so on my way to the right, I called my husband and I was like, it's, pre it's positive, like, we're having a baby, and, I went to my right and I was like, I'm just gonna tell them because 
Liz Rose, Lori McKenna, and Hillary Lindsay, they're all badass songwriters, but they're also mothers. And so I felt like it was such a safe way to like share that exciting news. And they were all like freaking out for me. And so we wrote Hummingbird because Liz Rose, whose house we were writing at that day, she has like hummingbirds um, all around her feeders. And I was so jealous because I was like, oh, I can never get them at my house. Like they don't come here. And they were like, oh, your tattoo is a hummingbird. And like, I was like, oh yeah. And my guitar is one too. It's a Gibson hummingbird. That animal has just followed me this entire time. And they were like, we should write that then. And it ended up becoming this triple entendre of like music and my like ink and then my little hummingbird heartbeat that was growing inside me with haze. And so it was almost like this lullaby that we got to write to my son before I ever met him. And then by the time that we were recording Hummingbird, Hayes was over a year old. And so I, he was starting to talk and say mama. So I just on the porch one morning got him to say mama, which was like the only word he knew. And I just sent the voice text to Greg and he put it at the top of Hummingbird. So Hayes, my son, is technically the only feature on this album. I wrote Good Friends. It was kind of my one and only Zoom co-write because I realized very quickly I hated writing on Zoom. It was just so clinical and scrubbed all the vibe out of why writing songs is fun. But I will say I'm glad that I stuck with it that day and didn't close my laptop because I was writing with Greg Kirsten, who was in, I think, Hawaii. And then Natalie Hemby came over and we wrote on my porch with Greg on the laptop. And he was just creating like a loop. And then, you know, Natalie and I are such great friends. We're in the High Women together. We've written so many songs for our projects over the years. And she's just one of those real ones that's gonna be with me for, for good. And so I actually wrote it about her. I, I also wrote it about my friend here in Nashville that's like not really in the music industry, but like she just keeps me so grounded and doesn't care if I'm successful or not. Like we're still gonna go get beers on a beautiful summer day and shoot the shit. So I feel like it's sort of my dedication to her because I was like, I don't think I've written a song about friendship. Like that's such a huge part of our life and I wish there were like more songs about it. So I decided to write this one. So the last song on Humble Quest is What Would This World Do? Which I wrote with my husband Ryan and our friend John Green. And we wrote it uh, about our friend and my producer Busby who sadly passed away um, a couple years ago from glioblastoma. And it was very rapid and terminal. And we wrote this song as, we wrote it before he passed away. So we were kind of hoping that, hey, if we write this for Buzz, maybe he'll pull through. Like you just don't know how powerful music or those vibrations can be. And so it was kind of our attempt at like keeping his spark alive. And he sadly passed away shortly after, but you know, as my producer of my first two records and the guy that like really saw something in me very early on, we wrote My Church together, 80s Mercedes, like he was so integral to the formation of those two like solidification records for me. I wanted to end this record with that dedication to him because even though he's not with us anymore and he's not on this album as a creator he did help create a sound with me in the beginning and I feel like he's still with me his wife after he passed away gave me his piano so his piano is in my basement with all of our like you know guitars and stuff and my son loves playing on it, so it really feels like an heirloom, and he's with me. And this song is, you know, one of the most heartbreaking and personal, but I think cathartic songs, um, because no one can escape the end. But I think the legacy we leave behind, whether it's our songs, or our memories, or the way we touched a complete stranger, which he did to so many, I feel like that is the most magical thing that exists that we know of on earth. And so this was my way of honoring my friend 
and my uh, my collaborator with this song. Mm -hmm. 